Theoria Praxis. What is Theoria? It is everything that is related to knowledge, to knowledge structuring, to critical thinking skills. It is dry. Even if experiential knowledge, knowledge that we acquire by the force of experience, it is merely a cognitive tool of acquisition, of having a certain paradigm, a certain theory, a certain stance. Now what is praxis? Praxis is related to effectivity, the method and the action. As in the Neoplatonic underground of theurgy, homoiosis theo was the first step. It was to incorporate aretologically, intellectually, certain composites that led to Theon Ergon, to praxis, through rites, ceremonies, shifts in perception, shifts in the soul and the mind, the spiritual intellect. You committed to Theon Ergon, the walk of gods. You let the gods impress you in order to lift you up to a certain level of understanding, perception of taumaturgy, miracle walking, for example. In other words, when you completed Homo Zisteo, which was progressing along the way, you are meeting the gods halfway. The gods do not descend to mortals in order to impress them. It is the mortals that pitch to the gods in order to act with them. And this is the first stage. Now in Egypt, there was a hieroglyph that was called Sia. And it was pure perception, perception of Heka. That means that you developed certain tools and methods, practical tools and methods, that were dependent on your perception, on your intellect, on your mind, on your emotions, on everything you committed to the ritual art of magic in order to succeed in praxis. You might be a learned scribe in Egypt. But to be of priestly case, to be a Magoi, as in Chaldea, you had to operate on your perception, on your soul, on your spirit in an effective manner. The same goes for traditions in, let's say, Buddhism. Do they just sit on the ass and meditate, drop the body, drop the mind, visualize some things? No. This is the progressive art of self-discipline in commanding your perception perception of your mind, of your consciousness, as if finding the right clavis, keys, to turn the gates and to open the doors of perception, to cleanse them, to understand it better, not only to understand, but to flow with the whole praxis, with the currents, with the invisible worlds, with the worlds of gods, or with the mind itself, the Buddha field. Now, Often, nowadays, people seek facadic knowledge. There are so many witches and wizards online with the thousands of aesthetic, dark aesthetic or bright aesthetic ideas of New Age. Well, the question is, where do they practice? What do they achieve? Is it some low magic agenda to gain some money, to gain some fame, to have some followers? Or is it truly about gaining perception? to work through it, to find feedback in one's action, effective magical action, in order to receive imprints as if sacraments on the intellect from the God, in order to progress further, both throughout life, attaining CD skills for the purpose of understanding, dropping them as soon as the soul, the jiva or the mind flies away from the Dionysian tomb. Now, you may ask how to acquire this praxis. Well, the grounding is in Theoria. You build a hermetical structure in which you operate. I call it the modular approach to magic. You have tools developed that work in practice. You have robust knowledge that is well researched. And from it, a magician is a civilized shaman. A shaman traveled with his soul through the Axis Mundi. A civilized magician has this much of structures almost mathematically, hermetically organized to be more precise, to be more adept at utilizing 
these structures in order to have effects. Now what are the effects? The effects is the gaining of skill, enrichment of the soul and placing yourself in the world you want to be posthumously and becoming a person that you are. Often in the modern day corporate world they ask what do you want to do in five years time? And the question for a magician should be whom do you want to become? Who do you want to become in five years time? What kind of values, skills you want to incorporate? How do you want to place yourself in relation to the world? How do you want to place yourself in relation to the invisible worlds, to the astral worlds, to the gods? So, this much said, remember that praxis is something that is truly yours. You cannot cheat on that, playing tarot cards. You cannot cheat on that, posting this much occult images. You cannot cheat on that lighting candles and pretending you play rituals, often wise botching operations that were supposed to bring you something in order to get some polishes and cuts from the operation, magical operation from the gods, from the deities, from the demons, from the dead, whomsoever you walk with. And if there is no effect in transformation of yourself, in gaining more self-discipline, in training the mind, your soul and spirit, changing them, ship shifting into something else, then you have failed yourself. You cannot cheat to the universe, you cannot cheat to God, you are just cheating on yourself, thinking that you achieved something and inflating yourself into this achievement that is null null. So think about it. highest sense of concentration commitment, great work, perseverance, understanding, gaining experiences, changing your perception. And as for the dry knowledge, the knowledge from books you gather is very important, strict sciences, social sciences. A magician cannot ignore the wealth of information, the wealth of knowledge. He structures it masterfully as a critical thinker in order to push himself to the limits in order to create order out of chaos, in order to epitomize himself as a hero, a demigod, a purified soul. And that all is of importance because the cosmos is changing. And the higher you place yourself in this expansive cosmos, the greater force you will have, attuned and pitched to the greater whole the more complete and fulfilled you are. There is a story about a Zen monk who was asked by his master at his deathbed, so did you attain Nirvana? Are you a master? And he said, I'm just an absolute beginner exploring the extent of my stupidity. And he passed away. He moved on to the next world. So let us remember that the greatest masters in this life are absolute beginners when they are meeting death. And the greatest fools of this world are total fools when they absolutely die. Thank you.